Hey everybody, welcome to a new video. I hope you had a great day. Let's take a look at some new stories, shall we? The first story is called, Just Use the Office's Wi-Fi. My work involves me having to install hardware in all of my employer's assets. This makes me fairly unavailable for all my other responsibilities, but it only happens on occasion, so it's normally no big deal. It only gets costly if I'll be away for extended amounts of time. As it so happens, we acquired another project a couple of states away in New Mexico. So I needed to go on site for a week or two to get all the assets in line. I'd waste around 14 hours to get on site and arrive on a Monday only to find out that my cell provider has no towers in the area. This means that my phone is effectively a high tech Rolodex. I tell them I need them to pick me up a little prepaid phone on whatever network works best in the area. I'm not lucky, I just need a crappy $100 phone for the next two weeks. They tell me they'll have it waiting for me in the office Tuesday morning. The thing about my job is, I typically answer to no one besides the owner of the company. I know my job inside and out. I know who I need to talk to whenever I need something. And I'm damn good at what I do. I'm not a complete jerk, but I'm used to my employer giving me whatever I say I need because they know that if I want something, there's a reason for it. Enter our problem. The project lead for this project moved over to my company when we bought the project out. So he feels like he has something to prove. When I arrive on Tuesday morning, I ask the supply tech for my new phone. He twirled his thumbs a bit and tells me he was instructed to tell me I need to talk to the project lead. I thought this was odd, but figured maybe he just wanted to introduce himself. I enter his office and my first impression is that this might be the smartest looking prick I've ever met. I've long learned that my first impression of someone is usually accurate, so I mentally buckle down and prepare for a show. He skips over introducing himself, I assume because he is so important I should have read his autobiography at some point, and immediately jumps in, are you the one that wanted a phone? I nod in affirmation and before I can speak, he dives back into his monologue. No one else around here gets a phone. Don't know why you think you're special. If you need internet, you can use the office Wi-Fi. Rather than wasting my breath explaining things, I decided that I just truck and say okay, whatever you say. Here's where the malicious compliance kicks in. Whenever I'm on location, they get built by the main office for all my time, supplies, etc. This all comes out of their bottom line, but I usually work quickly, so it isn't too bad. The thing is, the assets I'm installing hardware on are about 45 minutes away from the office and I have to ensure each one is activated before I can install the next to ensure there are no errors with the integration. This means that instead of activating them from my phone and troubleshooting on the spot, I have a 45 minute drive in between every step of my job. My job now goes 45 minute drive to the asset location, install hardware, 45 minute drive to the office, activate. If the activation works, another 45 minute drive to the next asset. If not, then 45 minutes drive back to troubleshoot, which hopefully works the first time, but can easily take more trips. Long story short, this turns what was originally going to be a two week project into just over six weeks. My time is not cheap, nor is my equipment. The increase in cost to this project was around $14,000 once you factor in my pay and the fuel cost. Then add however much extra four weeks of paying for me to stay at a holiday in express costs. I never saw this bill, so I didn't factor it in, but I assume it was around 700 per week. That brings us up an extra 17,000. That would have been the end of it. But the main office was not happy about this, as me not being available except by email at night or when I was in the office caused them tremendous difficulty in the extra amount I was absent. They ended up back charging his project for every cost that had come along due to my absence, which totaled just under 60k. So now his project is being hit with almost $80,000 in charges, all because he wanted to flex his authority and deny me a phone, which would have cost a couple of hundred dollars. That would have been the end of it. But then I'm told this morning that our newest project lead is being let go for wasting resources. The next story is called Sure Thing Boss. My brother used to work in environmental services in a rather large hospital. For those of you not fluent in corporate language, that means he was a janitor. He had a lot of cleaning duties that took him all over the hospital each day. However, each person was assigned a hallway that they had to maintain during the shift. My 
my brother did not have an issue with this and did all of his work as assigned. At this particular job, he often bumped heads with management, but in fairness, the way he describes it, he was working for a bunch of idiots. I obviously cannot comment on this, but in the time I have known my brother, he has always been an incredible hard worker and does what he can do to provide for his children, so I give him the benefit of the doubt and assume management was just being stupid. On one particular day, the management tried to implement a new rule. All staff members were now supposed to call the boss whenever they left their designated hallway. The boss man, Joe, just wanted a quick notification. I'm sure the reason for this rule made sense at the time, but it's one of those things that is just so stupid no one ever did it. That didn't prevent the boss from trying to enforce the stupid rule for. He harassed everyone, my brother included, all the time about leaving their workspace without notifying him. One day he was really going after my brother hard, until finally my brother had enough. He decided that it was best to follow the rule. The very next day he began. At the start of his shift, he called his boss. Hey Joe, I'm going to my hallway now. A few minutes later, my brother realized he didn't have enough supplies on his cart, and the required supplies were in the closet 10 feet outside the area he had been assigned. So he called his boss again. Hey Joe, I need to leave my hallway. I forgot some supplies. He did so. Then once he got back to his hallway, hey Joe, I'm back in my hallway now. An hour goes by and wouldn't you know it, he had to use the bathroom. Hey Joe, I need to go use the bathroom. It's a number two in case you were wondering. Then he went to the bathroom. Upon completion of the subtask, he went back to the hallway and called again. Hey Joe, I'm back in the hallway. I had a good bowel movement, no trouble to report there. At this point, Joe was getting annoyed, but he couldn't go back on his rule that he had gone through so much trouble to enforce. Meanwhile, my brother calls and many reports became increasingly elaborate. He was no longer just calling to say when he left and came back, but to explain why he was leaving, how long he would be gone and where he was going. Joe eventually stopped picking up his phone, so my brother just kept calling until he answered. My brother said he thinks he must have called his boss over 150 times during his 8 hour shift, each time leaving a very detailed report. With each report, his boss just replied something along the lines of Okay, 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 chat, uh, okay. Clearly just wanted to get off the phone. The next day he came back to work and didn't make any calls. And Joe never bothered him or anyone else about calling to check in with him after that. The last story is called, a pregnant woman should be capable of doing this. I work as a water filtration operator and am 31 weeks pregnant. Every 4 weeks I and the other operators rotate onto the maintenance shift where we work under this particular supervisor. We'll call him Randy. Randy likes to think he has more control than he does have. And honestly, the plant supervisor just lets him think that. About a month or so ago, I was working with him and he told me to pick up a 45 pound empty nitrogen cylinder. I politely reminded him that I was pregnant and shouldn't be doing that. To which he responded, since I didn't have light duty paperwork, shouldn't be a problem. I sucked it up and lifted the cylinder and carried it to the destination, but received a pulled muscle in the process. The next day I informed the plant supervisor and a work injury report was filed. When my statement was taken, the verbiage I used that was verified by another co-worker that was present caused Randy to get in trouble because he knew I was pregnant and essentially caused the injury to happen. They took me to a nurse to make sure that my baby was fine and that I was okay and was not experiencing any complications from the injury. It wasn't other than being in pain if I moved too much. They sent me back on my way and the plan supervisor put me on desk duty for the day. Randy was livid of course because he lost some of his manpower on the maintenance team. He made a fuss about me not having light duty paperwork saying that if I didn't have it then I should be capable of doing the work that is needed around the plant. I was capable, I just used common sense. Prior to this incident I did my job to the fullest within the limitations of my body which wasn't that much. I rested when I needed to, didn't lift more than my body would allow and most importantly I was the only female out of 7 employees so my other co-workers were more than willing to help me if I asked which wasn't that often. So the plant supervisor called me into his office and requested that I go get my light duty papers from the doctor ASAP. That's the only way he could protect me from getting further hurt at work. I told him I understood and made the call to the doc's office and picked it up that afternoon. I got the paperwork 
that was supposed to keep Randy quiet and it restricted me as such. No stooping more than two times an hour, no climbing ladders or poles at all, no climbing more than three flights of stairs a shift, no lifting more than 25 pounds, no standing more than 30 minutes out of each hour and limited contact with chemicals. These orders of course make it very difficult for me to do my job fully as it basically limits me to either desk work or general cleaning. Now I know this list is stupid because I can definitely do more than two times in an hour. I may be out of coming back up but I can do it. And the climbing more than three flights of stairs is ridiculous because that means I can't do all of my rounds. Someone else has to do the last set for me because you climb a set of stairs every time. Under normal circumstances, I would be more than happy to bend the rules here to make everyone's life easier. But honestly, since he's the one who complained and moaned for me to get this paperwork, I plan to make full use of it. So far, since I've received this paperwork, I keep a checklist of all the things I can't do and fill it like a bingo card. If I fill all of the things, to the office I go. Because that means I can't do any more physical work on shift. And he has a bad habit of tossing a lot of work my way at the beginning of my shifts. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel for more content. And please let me know if you prefer this kind of video background or the old style more. Have a great day. Bye bye.